Hey everyone, a big welcome to Easter weekend at One Life Church. If you are visiting us, I hope that you've had a meaningful experience as we've centered around the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you are looking for a church to call home and you are visiting us, why not visit the involvement desk where you can find a little bit more information about who we are or speak to the person leading this meeting. Uh, one of the things we believe that you need to find a healthy church to grow in your faith. We really trust that you've had a great time this weekend. That's all for me, Tristan. Have a great Sunday. Good morning, everyone. It's definitely the shortest church news I've ever heard. That was great. Family news on my side. I have a fifth kid now, for those of you who uh, know. Oh, it's amazing. Really, and I'm alive, barely. What you're seeing here is a corpse of what I used to be. <laughs> it's actually not the youngest one, that's the problem. It's, this, it's the fourth one. In fact, it's the fourth and the third, if you're wanting to know. Um, so it's absolutely incredible to be with you guys here this morning. Uh, I don't think for a, a preacher, a pastor, there's anything greater than being able to stand in front of people that you know and love and be able to present the Word of God in a way that hopefully changes people's lives, and especially on this Sunday. This Sunday is the most significant. We celebrate the most significant event that's ever happened. Nothing in history or into the future will ever change that this day that we celebrate is the defining moment on planet Earth. On Friday, we celebrated Jesus' death on the cross. And I think if you allowed yourself to contemplate genuinely that moment, it would have brought a certain severity to your faith. And as you looked inside, you would have seen that, uh, that Jesus' death on the cross genuinely and truly took care of your sin. But it is his resurrection that takes care of your salvation. Jesus died for your sin, but he rose for your salvation. And this moment that we celebrate here this morning today is us celebrating the fact that you and I can enter into the presence of the Father, that we can have the Holy Spirit living inside of us, that we can be the temple of the living God is because of this day many thousands of years ago. And it's because of this day many thousands of years ago that the whole planet changed. Uh, just after Jesus' resurrection, there was the disciples and they were doing their thing. They were preaching the gospel. There were signs and wonders. And then the church came under absolutely crazy persecution after this. And for a couple hundred years, the persecution carried on going. People were taken out of their homes, jailed or killed. If some of the streets in Rome were lined with the bodies and heads of people who claimed the name of Christ, Jesus' own brother was killed. Jesus' disciples were almost all of them were killed because they believed that Jesus did in fact rise from the dead. This is the most incredible truth and it's not just his disciples and his brothers and the community at large didn't just change because they thought that maybe Jesus was alive. They knew he was alive and it was the conviction that this day that we celebrate that Jesus is actually alive, that people were even willing to go to their graves because they realized that Jesus' resurrection was worth dying for. Not just worth living for, but it was even worth dying for. And even in the most gruesome deaths, the worst ways possible, the early church and the early disciples knew that it was because of this day, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, on this day that we celebrate this. And this is everything to us as believers. And I wonder if you wouldn't join me. I, I want us to pray together. And I, I want you to pray with me because we, we want this to fall heavy and deep into our hearts. We don't just want this to pass over us, do we? We don't want to exit through those doors the same person that we came in. 
want to let the Word of God wash over us and the Spirit of God change us so that by the time we exit through those doors, there's a revived passion because we know and understand that Jesus is alive. And it is this day that we celebrate this thing. Man, this is incredible, isn't it? Won't you pray with me, Lord? With my brothers and sisters in this room, we want to lift up your name. We want to say, Lord Jesus, that it is all because of you. It is all through you. It is all to you that the glory belongs. Lord, we are here because of you. We've come into this place, Lord, as a family because you died and then you rose again. And that can make us a family. It makes us one with you. That this moment that we celebrate here, Lord, let it fall deep into our hearts in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, we're continuing in the book of John. It's John chapter 20. And if I can encourage you to do anything, man, just read John chapter 20 this whole week. Just read it like a couple of times every single day. Let it sink in. Chat about it at Connect Group. It's absolutely amazing. So I'll start from verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the ones that Jesus loved, and said, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked into the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. It was still in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb, the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. Verse 10, then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? She replies, they've taken my Lord away and I don't know where they've put him. At this, she turned around And saw Jesus standing there. But she didn't realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have put him. I want to get him. Verse 16, Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Verse 17, Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary went straight to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. This is absolutely incredible, isn't it? Absolutely incredible. Uh, Mary had been freed from demonic possession. And so she's, she loves Jesus and she had supported Jesus in Jesus' ministry. And when Jesus had died, you can imagine her whole world started collapsing in on itself. Like this man was supposed to redeem, he was supposed to save, he was supposed to do all of these things. In, in her mind, Jesus was supposed to accomplish a lot more than up to this time he had accomplished. And she's going back to the tomb and she's weeping because in her mind, Jesus is dead. And in her mind, uh, she's so caught up in that it, even when Jesus pitches up behind her, and says, woman, why are you crying? She's so distraught, she's so broken, there's so much going on inside of her that she doesn't even recognize Jesus for who he is. Now, whether he had made himself unrecognizable or not, the Bible doesn't tell us, but she didn't recognize him. She thought he was the gardener. But then as soon as Jesus says her name, Mary, and there may have been a way that he used to say her name when he was alive before the crucifixion that she would have recognized us, but it was when Jesus calls her name, She recognizes him as teacher. 
you are the one. She, she recognizes Jesus is alive and she wants to go and embrace him, fall at his feet, whatever the case is. She, she wants to be around Jesus and Jesus says, no, 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 no. Just, just listen up, man. I haven't ascended to the Father yet. We've got no time for this. Go and tell my brothers. Go and tell the other disciples. Go and tell them that I'm alive. And she becomes this, like the first post-resurrection evangelist because Jesus calls her by name. And this morning, you and I have got to know, man, we celebrate this moment so much. We love the fact that Jesus rose from the dead, but our journey doesn't just end at this moment. It's like Jesus, if he was here, he'd be looking at all of you saying, it's amazing that you're remembering that I rose from the dead, but just, just catch this, catch the heart of this, that this isn't only for you in this room right now. This is for people out there. It's not just for us. It's for people out there. Yes, I am risen, and and it is true, and it is going to change the entire planet. But the way that it changes the whole planet is when I, I call you by name, you'll recognize me as Lord and Savior. And as you recognize me as Lord and Savior, don't just come to me. Go and tell the rest of the world. Go and tell other people that Jesus Christ has risen. He's alive. He's not dead. He's not in a tomb anymore. And it's like this morning, if he was here, he'd be saying, my boy, my girl, my church, my bride, this this army that is in this room right now. Guys, don't just stay in this moment. Won't you go out there where it counts the most? Go out there and tell the rest of the world, Jesus is risen. I, I feel like the church so often and I catch myself in this place as well. We're, we're trying to just hold on to Jesus as just only ours. Am I right? If you know, and again, and I, I, I don't speak about him as though he really rose from the dead. I, I don't tell the world like he really rose from the dead. There's a, a, a famous um, atheist that said this. He said, the reason why I do not believe in Christianity what his meaning is Jesus, is because if Christians really believed that heaven existed and hell existed, and that Jesus really did die and rise again, they'd be on their hands and knees begging me to come to heaven with them. You see, this moment that we're here to celebrate is Jesus rises again. This is everything to us. Without this moment, Nothing else makes sense. In fact, Paul says to other people, he says, if, if this is not true, if resurrection is not true, then I of all people and we as Christians of all people are to be pitied more than anything else. If this is not true, nothing else matters. If this is not true, all the Bible knowledge we have, all the church services we've had, all, even J- Jesus' death doesn't make any difference if he didn't rise again. It's this moment that Christianity pivots on. It's this moment that when I get up in the morning and I realize that my king died and then rose again, it drives me to be a light in the world. The reason why we can be the light, the reason why you and I can be salt, like a light on, on, on a hilltop, a city on a hill, a light on a lampstand. The reason why we can be those things is because of this moment that we get to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. Man, that's got to make you pumped for something. It's this moment that like, hey, when, you know, when the kid wakes up at 4.30 in the morning and breathes on you with morning breath. Okay, this moment, you know, allows me to get up and not beat the kid. I'm kidding, just chill. Or maybe not. Man, Jesus' resurrection is incredible. I just want to highlight two points, and then we need to pray. There's this thing, it says, on two occasions, though the door was locked. I felt as I was praying for us over the last week that for some of us, we've locked some doors in our hearts and our lives. And we've locked those doors because of pain, anxiety, insecurity, past things that have happened. So we've locked the door and we're gathered. It says there that the disciples were in fear because of the authorities that may be coming for them. You see, you and I lock doors in our hearts and our lives because we're scared. How many of us, even in our marriages, we've locked some doors because we're scared what happens if we had to open that door? 
We're scared. We're scared what would happen if, what happens if I had to tell my husband? What happens if I had to tell my wife? Do I have to bring up the past? What about my pain? What happened to you as a little kid? What did they say to you when you were in school? A whole bunch of things that we lock up inside of our hearts and lives because we're scared. Can I just say that fear can only lock doors. It never opens them. It always locks doors because it's always trying to self-preserve. And each one of us in the room know what this feels like because you know what it's like to try and preserve yourself, to try and preserve your masculinity. So, so, we, so we go overboard and, and in, in order to protect ourselves because really there's an insecurity and so we've got to go overboard to protect ourselves because you're in fear. Because you're scared about what people would think about you. You're scared about what they would say. And for you this morning, for you and for me, this has spoken to me over many, many years. Jesus is a professional at going through locked doors. Jesus is a professional at just appearing in the room. And you and I, we need this, man. We need the resurrected Savior. Am I right? In your marriage, you need the resurrected Savior. You won't be able to cope without it. Because you and I, we're professionals at locking doors. We're professionals at keeping by ourselves and making sure that no one comes in. Because we're scared. And so we're really good at being fake with people. Actually, I mean, hey. You came in here, hey, how's it, do, how, you know, how you going, how's, how you doing, whatever, whatever, you know, people are always asking how you doing, hey, no, fine, hey, no, lacquer, 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 but lacquer, hey, I know at least 30 of you said that this morning, but all 30 of you, just like me, know that when you answer with a lacquer but, or nah, all good, eh, that really, you're hiding behind a locked door sometimes, maybe even most of the time. And you need a resurrected Jesus to just appear next to you and say these words that he says to his disciples, peace be with you. And you need to hear that this morning. You need to know that we serve a resurrected Savior that didn't just die and is in some tomb. I remember many years ago, there was, I think it was the second time that this has happened, but a whole bunch of people discovered Jesus' bones. How's that, eh? And then a whole bunch more people went and discovered that it wasn't. But that one wasn't publicized. It was only the first one that was publicized. Oh, we discovered Jesus' bones. Oh, really? No, not really, but we're not going to publish that article. You see, Jesus' bones are not in a tomb. He's alive. And because he's alive... He appears behind locked doors. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Maybe even this morning, but you've definitely felt this before. You've been praying or you've been in a church service or you've just been by yourself or maybe even in the moment you're at a business meeting, you're doing something and you feel a tugging on your heart. You know that the Holy Spirit is trying to get into that space. And you know what that space is, don't you? Like That space that you've been trying to get him out of for how many years now? I also did that. And he wants to appear to you this morning. And he wants to call you by name. And as he calls you by name, you're going to say, wow, it's, it's really you, isn't it? And this is, some people are like, yeah, but I can see you on the stage, Darren. I do not see Jesus on the stage. The most amazing thing about what Jesus does, he breathes on his disciples in this as a foreshadow of what he would do as he ascends, he breathes on his disciples by the power of the Spirit and he empowers them with tongues of fire and with tongues coming out of their mouth in different languages to preach the gospel. Because remember, for you and for me, he appears in locked rooms so that doors can be opened, so that the gospel can be preached, so that the nations will know that our King is resurrected. Do you see that? And that's why we're here today. So can we worship our king together? Can, can we lift his name up? Can we make it all about him this morning? Can we, can we together as a family, can we worship him? Can we give him all we've got? Can we treat him as though he's this resurrected savior? Now, 
There will be some people, and I, if I can ask the band to join me up here on stage, there will be some people here, and I'm sure if you've been part of One Life Church for any moment of time, <laughs> you would have heard this. There's two groups of people here, and the first group, and the second group. Okay, chill. I don't want it to be weird. There are genuinely some people here that as I speak these words, you know that there's some locked doors in your heart. I was talking to my wife a couple of days ago, and I said, yes, Tashi, this whole parenting thing, hey, especially when you have five, it's like, what? You know, one or two, hey, if I mess them up, it's fine. The world's full of good people. But like five, sheesh. Hey, isn't that hectic? I know there's a whole bunch of old people in the room who are like, ah, oh, no, easy game, don't worry about it. Okay, we'll talk afterwards. I need your wisdom. But up till now, sometimes that's quite, that's quite a thing, eh? And I was talking to him, I said, I, 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 do you think that we have what it takes here? And I know the Bible verses. You've been equipped with everything you need for life and godliness, and the fruit of the Spirit are completely available, and the Holy Spirit lives in you. I know those things. But sometimes there's some of those doors that are locked, and there's fear in me, and there's insecurity in me. Will I be able to provide? Will I be able to protect them? There's a whole bunch of things that go through one's mind as we contemplate the future. And it was in that moment that Jesus said, but Darren, aren't you the one that's going to be preaching on closed doors that I just appear inside? In this area of your life, in, your, in this area of parenting, my boy, I don't care how many doors you've closed. I don't care how scared you are or how fearful you are. I want you to know, my boy, I've got you. And I'm a professional at walking through walls, appearing, and going through locked rooms. And this is why. Because my boy, I need you and your family to be out there preaching the gospel. And don't worry, my boy, I'm going to take care of your kids. Because I gave them to you and I'll provide. He said this to me in my past before when I was heavily involved in business and really wrecking everything. Hey, my boy. Won't you tuck into me? Won't you drop that insecurity? But dad, I, I won't have enough. Hey, hey. I'm a professional at coming into locked doors and making sure that you realize that I'm the resurrected king. But dad, in my marriage, I'm really wrecking everything and I don't know what to do. And the reason why is because I really hate myself because of things I've done and places I've been and what a what a what. And we've got all these excuses, all of these doors that are locked in. Your Savior is right next to you. He doesn't respect a locked door. He comes in. He isn't going to barge in for no reason. He, he loves you and He loves the rest of the world. And it is His, it is his goal to get His bride. Those of you who are in this room would say with your mouth and confess with your mouth that He is Lord and believe in your heart that He rose from the dead. It's, it's you who He says on this morning, your salvation is not just for you. It's for the world. And if you're here this morning and you don't know this Jesus and you don't know who I'm talking about and you've got so many locked doors, you don't know what's going on. It's to you that the Savior comes to you and He calls you by name, by the power of His Spirit. And I promise you, if you would give yourself a moment and as the band helps us and they lead us in song, if you would give yourself a moment to cry out to that king and say, I don't understand why this happened or why that happened. I don't understand why my life has turned out this way. And I don't understand all of these things. But Lord, I need you with me. This is what I can promise you. By the power of his spirit, he presences himself with his people and you can receive salvation at the very instant that you would confess with your mouth that he died on a cross and believe in your hearts that he was risen from the grave, you'd be saved in an instant and the first door would be opened. Won't you stand with me? Man, what a privilege this is to be able to stand with all of you this morning and won't you cry out with me won't you open up your heart won't you recognize the Savior right next to you behind that closed door in that area of pain in that area of sin in that area wherever that is won't you recognize your Savior won't you recognize that our King is right next to you 
inside the room with you. The, the room that you've tried to keep closed, he's, he's there. And though the doors were locked, and Jesus said, peace be with you. So Lord Jesus, all of us with, our, with these voices that you've given us, Lord, we want to cry out to you this morning. We want to say, Lord, that you are worthy of it all. We want to say, Lord, that you are incredible. I want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming into my locked door. Even when I didn't know you, when my heart was far from you, when I was against you, Lord, there you found me. When I made my, my bed in the depths of Sheol, there you found me. It was in that place that you rescued me. It was in that place where you appeared behind the locked door, Lord, and you saved Darren Chalmers. And I pray this morning for anyone in this room that you'd give them courage to pray, to confess out loud with their mouths, that yes, you died, and yes, you rose again, and that was enough for them to be saved. Lord, we worship you this morning.